welcome to the COVID-19 vaccine information session. We appreciate at the Department of Health that you've taken the time to join us to learn more about this. My name is Stacy Kraft. I'm the Public Health Education Coordinator with the Ulster County Department of Health. And I've been there for 20 years now in the Health Education Unit. I've worked through public health crises such as the um, 9-11 terrorist attacks, the smallpox and anthrax scares, the tick population expansion and crisis, H1N1, Zika and Ebola to name a few. Currently, I've been working through the COVID-19 pandemic response by helping to respond to the community through the COVID-19 hotline. And I'm answering lots of really creative questions um, and great questions that the community has about the pandemic and anything else related to Ulster County government. Um, also, I've been actively involved as the volunteer coordinator at our Ulster County POD locations. And uh, POD stands for Point of Distribution, where we do our um, mass vaccination clinics throughout the community. And I have been um, overseeing the content development for the Department of Health social media accounts. Um, but my favorite public health topic um, to talk about is tick-borne illness prevention. And before all this, I enjoyed looking at ticks under the microscope and helping people to navigate what to do next um, after a tick exposure. Um, I am currently protected to the fullest extent possible with the Moderna vaccine. And um, that's it about me. Um, if we could just go around and hear um, a little bit about uh, where you work and uh, if you are currently vaccinated and your name, that would be appreciated. I'll start with me. Um, so Madison Freeman, I work at the Ellenville Regional Hospital. Um, I'm happy to have you today, Stacy. thank you. Um, I work specifically at the uh, Rural Health Network and I am vaccinated to the fullest extent, again, with the uh, Moderna vaccine, such as yourself. And if you're not comfortable sharing that status, you don't have to. Um, can we have Carrie go next, please? Hi, I'm Carrie. Um, I work at Old Regional Hospital. I work at the administration team as an admin assistant, and I am not currently vaccinated. Okay. And then um, Joel. Maybe Joel has been holding. Sorry, on. I have to take a phone call. No problem. <laughs> okay. So. Thank you again for being here. Um, this talk is all about the COVID-19. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss somebody in the room? Oh, hi, Annette. Annette. I'm sorry, go ahead. Please, we're just introducing ourselves. I just got here, thank you. My name is Annette Snyder and I'm an administrative assistant for the Ellenville Hospital Rural Health Network. Welcome, thank you. Thank you. So, um, I just wanted to start out by directing everybody to the Ulster County COVID-19 Virtual Center because this is um, where you can find out the latest information about anything to do with COVID vaccinations, frequently asked questions. And so if you wanna bookmark this site, um, this would be a great place to have local data and information. And as a matter of fact, our county executive does a weekly, it was bi-weekly, but this week we're transitioning to just Thursday's update about the latest on COVID-19. And he gives a really good data overview of how we're doing as compared to, um, you know, other areas in the region. Um, and he also lets us know the latest that we need to be updated on. So this is great. It's on his Facebook Live, but if you don't have that social media capability, you can check it out on the Virtual Center website where it gets archived. 
And um, this is an example of some of the data from that website. Um, and I'm happy to report that our active cases have been dropping um, thanks to the hard work of our residents in doing all the personal protective measures that need to be done to stay social distance, wear masks, and uh, reduce the spread with proper hand washing. So we are lucky to see that dropping again. And also we could attribute that drop to our increase in our vaccination rates. So at um, the vaccinateulster.com, you can find out about our schedule. And um, we have a new walk-in model so that we're removing barriers to getting vaccinated. And one of the barriers had been that it was very cumbersome for people to register, um, confusing at times, uh, and it was also difficult for those without internet access and computer access to do that. So this hopefully will get more people in the door. And this schedule shows um, that coming up um, tomorrow, we have one at the Esopus Town Hall from one to six. If that's convenient for you, there's um, additionally other uh, opportunities that will be posted on that vaccinateulster.com website for as soon as we know. Sometimes we're not getting our vaccine allocations um, far in advance, so it's hard for us to really put up the schedule more than a week in advance. So that's why um, this is what we know at this time. And you should bookmark vaccinateulster.com to keep up with that. Um, but you can also see who's eligible now. And uh, we know it's anybody over 16 residing in New York, working or studying in New York. And um, there has been some news that the FDA may be approving the Pfizer vaccine um, as early as next week for the adolescent age range of um, 12 and up but we are um, looking forward to getting more guidance on that. Another way that Ulster County is breaking down barriers and helping people to get to the vaccine appointments is by free transportation. So this slide shows you that we're partnering with our Ulster County Area Transit, also known as UCAT, to bring rides to people who needs special curbside pickup. So if you have a disability, um, if you're a senior, then you would qualify for this door-to-door um, -door transportation option. We do require 24-hour notice, and you would call the number here, which is 845-334-8120 in order to get your ride set up 24 hours in advance of your appointment. Now, if you want to just meet the bus at its normal pickup routes, the fee for that would be waived so that you could get to the clinics um, from a convenient transportation location near you. If you're not in the um, group of seniors or those with disabilities. And at any point during this presentation, if you feel the need to ask me a question, you can feel free to put your um, digital electronic hands up sign or just unmute yourself and let me know. I think there's not a lot of us, so we can make it a little bit more informal. So here on this slide, I'm talking about an opportunity to help out if you are interested in being a volunteer. Um, it's actually not a true volunteer situation because we would be paying a stipend. Um, I believe it's $75 for half a day and $150 for non-medical for a full day. So you can go to this website, ulstercountyny.gov forward slash volunteer to find out about those opportunities um, to serve your community and be a part of this vaccination effort. So 
One thing I wanted to cover up front is that there has been um, more and more scams, especially toward um, seniors, trying to get them to um, reserve their spots with money. And we just want everybody to know that that's not right. And vaccines are always free, no matter what. So you can read about this more at the Federal Trade Commission. Um, and just to talk a little bit about the pandemic and how we can stay up to date. Um, if you're not already subscribed through the governor's updates, I recommend um, going ahead to this website and entering your email address um, in order to get the newsletter. And it's really a fantastic way to stay in the know about the reopening of New York or whatever changes are happening um, for your work site. Sometimes those things are mentioned um, and they always have a really light deep breath moment at the end of them, which um, talks about community members helping out. Um, and it's always very inspirational. So I do recommend subscribing. So this is about the data. And um, I think it's important to note that um, there is the vaccine tracker from New York State Department of Health. And so if you want to take a look at that in more depth, you can go to that website. And it's really fantastic because you can compare us to other counties. Um, but what this slide is showing you is that Ulster County is doing quite well. Um, we have a total population of 178,599. And out of that population, there's currently nine. 94,972 people with at least one vaccine dose. Um, and so that's 53.2% of the population with at least one vaccine dose. Um, so we're really proud of that. It's actually one of the higher counties in New York State. Um, and we have 71,581 people um, with the completed vaccine series. So. If it was Moderna or Pfizer, they have both. And this slide shows that our vaccine um, numbers by race and ethnicity um, for the Mid-Hudson region are actually not doing great. Um, so you can look at the demographic data at that website. And this next slide, I just pulled Ulster County's numbers and compared to the Mid-Hudson region, um, a lower percentage of African-Americans, Asians, and Hispanics are being vaccinated. Um, for white, we are seeing quite good uptake of the vaccine at 92.5% in Ulster County. But we do wanna see that improve and um, we want to make it accessible and um, help people to understand why it's safe and um, how they can get it. So that's part of um, the education that we're gonna hope that this presentation helps you to understand more so you can be ambassadors to bring the information back to your family, friends, and loved ones. So to look at more data, if you're interested, um, there's also the New York State COVID-19 tracker uh, for people who are positive with COVID. And um, the next slide here shows Ulster County, persons tested positive by county. And you can see that I took this slide actually on Sunday night. So there was 13,537 positive um, tests in Ulster County to date. And you can um, do more playing on that website to compare our numbers. But if you want to look nationally, you can go to CDC's COVID-19 data tracker and um, see that um, there's, these are the cases in the United States. Um, and this is our total vaccine administered number um, comparing and also our deaths in the United States. 
Um, the State Department of Health has designed a COVID alert New York app and um, really hoping that more people will start utilizing it because it will be more effective the more people that do and it will help to stop the spread of COVID-19 um, by identifying if you have been in the vicinity um, within six feet of somebody who is positive with COVID-19 so that your phones would talk to each other um, anonymously. None of your information would be shared, but you would get a text letting you know the, about the potential exposure. And then that would allow you to make the determination to self-quarantine immediately, get tested, and reduce the potential exposure risk to your friends, family, neighbors, and coworkers. So another resource I wanna bring up is that um, it's so important to take care of yourself. And so we wanna ask the question constantly, what is the most nourishing thing you can do for yourself right now? And um, be tuning into your body and always kind of checking in and making time for self wellness. And um, these resources on this slide can help you to make time for that. So the take breaks at Headspace New York is normally a paid application, but due to the pandemic status, the company owner has opened it up for us all to try. And um, it's a big hit in our household. Um, my daughter enjoys it to go to sleep. There's um, different uh, for guided imagery, sleep, um, relaxation, and uh, we use it all the time. And we'll probably subscribe when it's not free because it's that good. So I really recommend you check that out. Um, additionally, this um, mental health support line is um, actually called the New York State Emotional Support Helpline. It's seven days a week. And um, anybody can call with any little thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything major. Um, they have great, um, highly trained social workers and support staff there that can help you through and connect you to resources. So this is a great one to have um, also bookmarked. And um, we've all been through a lot with this. Some of us have lost family members um, and friends. So we want to um, just be in touch with how we're feeling about this whole topic and um, share these resources with people that we need to share them with. So let's think about um, what is known about the infection of SARS-CoV-2. That's the virus that causes COVID-19. Um, it can result in a range of illnesses from mild to severe illness and then even death. So we know that about 30% of persons infected with SARS-CoV-2 do not have symptoms. Um, and then unfortunately, no one can predict how severe any person's illness might be, um, but certain factors can increase your risk. So people uh, who are more likely than others to become severely ill when infected are those that are older adults, people with certain medical conditions like diabetes, obesity, cancer, or heart disease. Um, and then we know that more than 80% of COVID-19 deaths occur in people over the age of 65. Um, and also deaths are occurring in people um, over the age of 45. So 95% of the deaths occur in people older than 45. And most importantly is how to prevent COVID-19 and we've all been rehearsing this and in the habit now, I think of wearing our mask and washing our hands with soap and water, um, using hand sanitizer when the water's not available. Super important to remember about the T-zone. So that's the eyes, nose and mouth. And so we're gonna keep those droplets out of that T-zone by avoiding touching that area. Um, you can disinfect sur surfaces that are frequently touched. And most important is um, getting the vaccine. 
So we know that the COVID-19 vaccine is the safer way to build protection. Um, getting the virus that causes COVID-19 may offer some natural protection um, known as immunity, but experts don't know how long this protection lasts and the risk of severe illness and death from COVID-19 far outweighs the benefits of natural immunity. So COVID-19 vaccination will protect you. Um, to understand how COVID vaccines work, it's helpful to first look at how our bodies fight illnesses. So um, when a germ or a virus that causes COVID-19 invades our body, they attack and multiply. This invasion um, is called an infection. And then our immune system uses several tools um, such as our blood, our red blood cells um, and our white blood cells. And these are all there to fight infection. Um, the different types of white blood cells fight infection in different ways. Um, so this goes through those ways. And um, we know that the first time a person is infected with the virus that causes COVID-19, it can take several days or weeks for their body to make and use all the germ fighting tools needed to get over the infection. Um, after the infection, the person's immune system needs to remember what it learned about how to protect the body against that disease. So experts are still learning how long these memory cells protect a person against the virus that causes COVID-19. Um, right now we have our um, quarantine exemption for people who are vaccinated and that goes out 90 days, um, but it, it may be extended. And additionally, people who've had a prior infection with COVID-19 can get a quarantine exemption. Um, so you might ask the question, will it change my DNA? And I was listening recently to a conversation between Dr. Uh, Murthy, our Surgeon General, and Dr. Colbert of the NIH who helped develop the vaccine. And she was saying that the messenger RNA being used by cells is nothing new. She said that the DNA is in a completely different compartment and the message the, from the vaccine that's delivered gets chewed up and goes away essentially in 24 hours, leaving the body with just the intelligence to fight the specific virus should it need to. So no, our bodies are not changed. The, um, the DNA is not affected at all. And um, so we know that there have been three authorized for emergency use from the FDA. And um, we'll go over them in a little bit. You can learn more at the CDC website noted. So the Moderna vaccine is done in four weeks apart, 28 days um, and two doses. And we know that is 94.5% effective in preventing people from getting the COVID virus. It's authorized for 18 and older, and you can read more on the fact sheet. Um, this fact sheet is also given to you at the time of your vaccination. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine is given in two doses, but this one's 21 days apart, and it's showing a 95% efficacy rate and authorized right now for 16 and up. Um, this one has some challenges for storage, needing to be in such extreme temperatures. Um, and then there is um, some details here about how our cells um, utilize the piece of the protein to trigger the immune response. And this builds the immunity to the virus. Um, and so the other type of vaccine is Johnson & Johnson, Janssen COVID vaccine. Um, this is known as a non-replicating viral vector vaccine given in one dose. Um, and you can see that in the United States, it's shown 72% effective in preventing moderate to severe COVID-19. 
Um, so the J&J &J was paused, which allowed scientists and the medical community to look at the data closely, conduct an investigation, and communicate with the medical communi community. There were 15 events out of 8 million vaccines given. So considering those statistics, you would have two times better a chance of getting struck by lightning than getting a blood clot and low platelets from this vaccine. This example can increase our confidence in vaccines that the safety monitoring in place works and it remains a vaccine that is available. So how do the viral vectors work? They use a modified version of a different virus, the vector, to deliver important instructions to our cells. And um, interestingly enough, they have been working on viral vector vaccines since the 1970s. Um, suddenly when the pandemic hit, um, it was available, the research was available and shared uh, with the medical community and scientists to be able to develop it really fast. So none of the vaccines that are currently authorized use a live virus. Um, so some people have symptoms like a fever after getting a vaccine, and this is a normal uh, reaction of your immune system learning to recognize and fight the virus that causes COVID-19. So the ways we know that the vaccines are safe is that they've started out through um, processes with testing small groups of people, and then they were given to other um, diverse groups of people with different physical health and um, age and race backgrounds. Um, third, the vaccine was given to tens of thousands of people and tested for efficacy and safety. Um, fourth, the CDC's advisory committee on immunization practices looked at the data to see if the vaccine is safe and it works. And they gave the advice to the FDA. And, and then the FDA um, continuously looks at the data um, with this advisory committee to decide on the vaccine's approval. So after these steps are done, um, then we can know that it's safe and it works. So this is another slide about the phases of the clinical trials. And um, people often wonder how it could be safe if it happens so fast. So this addresses that. Um, we already had helpful information, so we weren't starting from scratch. We had a lot of motivated people who wanted to participate right away in the clinical trials. So that didn't um, take us a lot of time to find those volunteers. And um, the US and other governments were highly motivated and invested a lot of money to support the vaccine companies with their work. Um, additionally, manufacturing happened at the same time as the safety studies. So the vaccines were ready to be distributed once they were approved. So I'm just going to go a little bit faster through some of these slides because I noticed that our time it's ticking, but um, I do wanna point out that we have a robust vaccine safety and monitoring system that exists. Um, one of them is called Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System or VAERS. And so any clinician can enter information about a known um, adverse event. And additionally, patients in the community can enter any information on that website. Um, so if you just Google VAERS, you can get to that website and utilize that for any reporting needs. Um, there was a new system that was developed um, to help monitor the vaccine safety called VSAFE, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, I just want to point out that you can't get the COVID vaccine, um, you can't get the COVID virus from the vaccine. So because there's no live virus, um, you can't catch it from the vaccine. So that is one frequently asked question. Um, people also have questions about allergies and um, 
it's very clear that if you have a history of severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis, then um, if to any of the ingredients in the vaccine, then you should avoid them. But these vaccines don't contain eggs, gelatin, preservatives, or latex. So you can look at the full list of ingredients on the um, vaccination fact sheet uh, that's available online or when you get the vaccine um, as well, that's available there too. But if you have a history of severe allergic reaction to something else that's not in the vaccine, like peanut butter, you can discuss the um, risks and benefits with your healthcare provider before receiving the vaccine. Um, so who should not get vaccinated? Um, we know that most people are, of, are able to, um, but if you have questions about that, you should follow up with your doctor. Um, but at this point, um, if you are isolating from experiencing COVID-19, you would obviously delay getting vaccinated until after you're out of your 10-day isolation. Um, if you're in quarantine, obviously you're not going to break the quarantine to get the vaccine either. So people who may get the vaccine after considering risks include individuals with a history of severe or immediate allergic reaction, um, pregnant women, people with certain immune compromising conditions, breastfeeding women, and people on anticoagulants. So if you are thinking about becoming pregnant, it is safe uh, for you to get the vaccine. Um, there has been no evidence of fertility problems um, or any side effects of the vaccine. And this vaccine has been scrutinized and studied um, more intensely than any other vaccine in the history so far. Someone who is pregnant or breastfeeding can they get the vaccine? Yes, getting vaccinated is a personal choice for people who are pregnant or breastfeeding. A discussion with your healthcare provider might help you make an informed decision, but currently the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologics recommend that COVID-19 vaccines be offered to pregnant and breastfeeding individuals when they're eligible. So we did talk about this. And then there's some people who should follow special procedures. Um, so people who have been treated with antibody-based therapies known as monoclonal antibodies or convalescent plasma should wait 90 days after treatment of those things to be vaccinated. Um, and um, we did talk about that. So, I'm just going to skim forward a little bit here and we'll talk about what to expect before, during, and after your COVID vaccine. Um, so a side effect is something that could occur after receipt of your medication or vaccine. Um, even though we don't want this to happen, um, we can expect this sometimes based on the clinical trials. Um, and these things are usually very mild and go away within 24 to 48 hours in general. Um, an adverse effect is an unexpected effect that occurs after the receipt of the medication or vaccine, which may or may not be caused by the medication or vaccine. So what do we expect? Um, we can look for tiredness, headache, pain at the injection site, muscle and joint pain, chills, nausea, and or vomiting and fever. Um, these are all things that have been documented and are signs that your body is building immunity or protection. If you do have any serious side effects that you're worried about, you would always call your doctor to discuss these. And um, we do recommend using the V-Safe Health Checker uh, which is the CDC website um, that can text you and you can notify the, um, the CDC 
through your questionnaire messaging that you get from this Be Safe application. And um, if there's anything unusual, they will follow up with you. Um, and it's a really great way to contribute more data to the vaccine um, understanding. One thing that uh, we get a lot of phone calls about at the Ulster County Recovery Service Center um, is that people have misplaced or laundered or lost their vaccination record card. So CDC recommends taking a photograph of that so you have an electronic backup copy. And um, even though you would get vaccinated and it would give you a great amount of protection, it's still um, critical that you follow the other procedures of um, properly vented indoor spaces and um, avoiding crowds staying six feet away from people. So we know that by protecting yourself with the vaccine, you're also protecting your community. And I hope that you'll take some more time to visit these CDC websites to learn more information that we might not have covered today. Um, as proof of vaccine, you could use a smartphone app called the Excelsior Pass. And um, you can then consider it like a passport to your favorite shows, um, your sporting events. It makes it easier for those um, places to access your test results for COVID-19 or um, your vaccination status for getting into fun things and be, being able to um, return to more normal activities. So this um, isn't something that you have to do, but it's nice if you have a smartphone and you want to, you can Google that and see how you can get that access on your phone. Um, and becoming vaccinated opens up so many opportunities um, for being able to be around uh, more people, travel uh, more safely, and um, maybe even hug a loved one. So just recently, last week, the CDC um, let us know about what we can do outdoors. Um, choosing safer activities. And so you can go to this website and find out if you're vaccinated, um, that you can attend a small outdoor gathering with other fully vaccinated um, people and unvaccinated people um, and how you should mask up or not. So you can look up those details at this Choosing Safer Activities website from the CDC. And um, I just thought if you wanted to take a few minutes, we could um, have a little discussion about what concerns you have regarding the COVID vaccine. Um, what have you heard from people in the community regarding the vaccine? Um, so does anybody want to step in and be brave and, and let me know? I can just jump in. I know that for people in our community, a lot of the time what we're seeing is they have the hesitancy and lack of trust due to potential side effects that are unknown at this point due to the lack of time um, that has, you know, since the uh, vaccine has been developed. So you kind of touched on it in your um, previous slides, but just yeah. knowing that it shouldn't be just kind of jumping into that conversation again would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, a common theme is it felt like, you know, all of a sudden there's a new virus and then all of a sudden, you know, which wasn't really all of a sudden we waited like a good year for the solution um, for the antidote, the, the vaccine to come out um, while our trusted, you know, scientists were researching it and utilizing old data that was already existing to build upon the, you know, the exact um, 
structure and know how to formulate it in a safe way. And then there, the trials um, happened. So it was, it was a very um, specific and well-studied process that got us to the point of a solution. And um, there's actually more vaccines being manufactured as we speak. So in a few, year or two from now, there could be even more options available to us. Um, but we can rest assured that the FDA and the advisory committees are studying and, and watching. And right now the data is showing such amazing results as far as its safety. Um, so that's been something that we can hopefully feel more secure about. Um, does anybody wanna talk about what information would help people in your community to trust the vaccine? Again, I can jump in. I think okay. just the uh, information about the how the um, methods for the vaccine that are currently utilized have been used before, just making that more of a public knowledge, I think. I feel like people, again, think it's this new thing that has never been tested or seen before, and just making that more public and well known would probably help. Good point, yeah. Okay, and um, does anybody want to shout out what would make people in your community more likely to get the vaccine? I've seen that like Anheuser-Busch is going to be incentivizing with a drink for people who show their vaccine card. Um, you know, I've heard about like donut shops chipping in on this. Um, what do you think about that? Is, is that really going to be motivating to get a lottery ticket from your state or Definitely wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Little perks are always nice to get a, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so um, how can we make it easier for people in the community to get the vaccine? We talked about what we're doing in Ulster County with free rides and um, walk-in clinics. Um, additionally, the state sites are all walk-in at this point as well. Um, does anybody have any other thoughts on how to make it easier to get the vaccine? I'm just trying to think. I think for the rural community, especially being able to go to people. I know you had the um, UCAT. You were talking about the bus being able to pick people up. If there was mm -hmm. ever potential, if it was kind of an authorized vaccine, being able to go to people instead of having right. to come to that come to you, I think would help. Okay. Uh, these transportation barriers, but that's the idea that I have. I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, there is a population um, in our community that are homebound. So um, if people want to call the Ulster County COVID-19 hotline and recovery service center um, and let us know who needs you know, help, we have a list and we can send out nurses um, for those special circumstances. Great. Uh, so there's opportunities to become an ambassador for this cause and to learn more information about vaccines. And um, our federal government um, and our attorney general um, have developed this COVID-19 community core. And so this is a way to learn more and you can join the community core by going to We Can Do This um, with the Health and Human Services website. And um, they'll send you opportunities to do webinars. Um, they'll share fact sheets and you'll get regular updates with the latest vaccine news and resources to share with your community. Um, and then here's some contact information uh, for reaching out to the Ulster County Recovery Service Center. Um, like I said, I'm manning the phones two days a week and we get really great questions. We get a lot of questions about people, you know, who need help with 
getting their quarantine orders or getting their quarantine release orders so they can go back to school. Um, we have people with all sorts of um, interesting dilemmas. Recently this week, we had a couple traveling in uh, another country and unfortunately they tested positive on their PCR even though they had already had COVID. Um, but this is something that can happen for 90 days um, after you were positive, you can continue to test positive. And so, um, you know, we've been helping them to get released from being held in another country. So there's some really complex situations and then there's some really, you know, easy fixes, getting people back to work with their release from isolation letters. Um, but it's been, it's been a interesting process of just learning all the changes through the year of what the new guidance is. And this week we're changing our knowledge base and trying to you know, adapt to the new social distanced um, reopening language. So you know, the capacity of um, events and gatherings is now gonna be increased May 19th so that more people can go and be in the outdoors and at events as long as they're six feet apart. So that's the latest from the governor. And um, so we try to stay up to date on all these guidelines so that we can communicate it with the community. So always feel free to call us at that number 443-8888 for more information. And these are some of the sources that I utilize to build this PowerPoint. So I hope that it was helpful to you all. And I did get through it quicker than I expected. So we can either chat a little longer or get a few minutes left in the hour to be on our way and do what we need to do. I'll take any questions you have right now. Thank you, Stacy. Um, Carrie or Annette, did you guys have any questions for Stacy while she's here? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate your time and listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you, you too. Thank you all. Thank you, Stacy. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you, Stace. Nice job.